If there were ever an argument in favor of clerical celibacy. It would be what? Ministers' wives? You know, there are times when I think my husband might agree with me. Sit down. I'm sure you do your best to fit him into your busy schedule. You really see Tom as a neglected husband. He'd find that very amusing. I think you'll be happy to know that we've completely sold out all the tickets for the Founders' Lunch. Oh, I'm thrilled to hear it. I'm sure you are. Go on. Well, I just want to make sure everything goes off as smoothly as possible tomorrow. The caterer and his staff will have to be here as early as possible. Well, whenever you like. And the florist will need time to do his arrangements. Well, I have to leave for my office no later than 8.30, so after that, the house is yours. Martha. Were there any last-minute details? Mm, I don't think so. Well, somehow I had the impression there was something very important. Perhaps you'd like to count the forks, make sure we have enough. <sighs> Perhaps I ought to. I don't want to be accused of stealing them. Mrs. Winter, why did you come here tonight? Well, I came because of tomorrow. I didn't mean to embarrass you. I'll accept the luncheon as your reason for being here. If you want me to. I thought if anyone, you would understand what it meant to be lonely. I guess I just wanted someone to talk to. You know, it's hard for me to understand her choice. I mean, if I were to pick between you and Rodney Harrington, you still love her very much, don't you? Well, I love Tom, but in its way, it's equally impossible. Susan. You know, we really have a great deal in common, Stephen. But not the sort of thing that makes for the kind of friendship you seem to be suggesting. What did you think I had in mind? Look, Susan, I'm very flattered. But I'm not available for making husbands jealous. You see, jealousy isn't a magic cure for an ailing marriage. If anything, it's the fatal dose. I know. I'm glad you know. Oh, by the way, your ex-wife and Rodney Harrington are coming to our house tonight to discuss getting married in Tom's church. I'll tell her you said hello. Rodney, uh, come on in. I'm sorry we're late. It was my fault. She was wearing slacks when I came to pick her up. Uh, I was um, out house hunting, and I'd had second thoughts. I, well, anyway, I hope they haven't kept you waiting. You know, I told her that I was sure you had seen girls wearing slacks before, that your own wife probably wore them once in a while. Uh, yes, she does. Yes. Uh, but she insisted on changing before we came over. Uh, why don't you make yourself comfortable? Thank you. I'd, uh, I'd offer you coffee or something, but uh, my wife, Susan, isn't at home. That's it. Uh, she's uh, been very busy with a festival. Uh, she intended to be here, but, well, I guess something came up at the last minute. And, well, it's, uh, <laughs> it's for a good cause. So, you want to get married in my church, huh? Yes. Yes, it's pretty important to both of us. I, I don't know how much Betty has told you, but... Well, it's the second time around for us. Hmm. The first time we had both sets of parents all arguing over the top of our head, deciding whether or not the marriage should or shouldn't come off. And there were, there were some other factors, too. That... It was a shotgun wedding. You might as well know everything before you decide whether or not you want to marry us. Anyway, we were married by a justice of the peace who mumbled his way through the ceremony. It wasn't a very 
good way to begin a life together, especially one that had a couple of dozen other strikes against it. This time, you'd like to get off to a better start, huh? We want it to be right, completely right from the beginning. There's one other thing, too. We don't want just a piece of paper that says we're husband and wife legally. We not only want to take our vows in the eyes of men, but... In the eyes of God. Yes. Well, you got yourself everything except the wedding date. I'd be delighted. That's wonderful. Thank you. You don't know. You don't know. Oh, excuse me, excuse me. Not a drop. Do I pass the test? You, you've all met, haven't you? Of course, yes, we have. Hello. Well, you make a lovely couple. You think I'll persuade my man of God to marry you? Yes. Your husband's already agreed. Well, that's wonderful. We have to drink a toast. Oh, maybe another time. We have, we have to get going. Oh. Please excuse my being so late. That's all right. Reverend Winter told us you were busy with the festival. Yes, the benefit luncheon has been my biggest headache. I thought I had taken care of everything, but then I found I had to stop over at the Peyton house for a few last-minute details. You know how that gets to be. You start to talk and just keep on talking. Well, Reverend, thank you again so much. Oh, listen, uh, be sure to tell me when the wedding date is set. You want to have the church available, right? Good night. Good night. Good night. You deliberately created a, an awkward situation. I was, I was talking about Stephen Court. You could have waited to tell me where he'd been. I thought you were anxious. You know, it's hard to believe that she asked him for a divorce. That's her concern. A private concern, not ours. That's true. Too true. But having just been with Stephen, it's very difficult not to make a comparison. You know, he asked me to stay for a drink. I'm sure he was just being polite, although I know he was enjoying our conversation. But I knew you would disapprove, so I said I would take a rain check. You're being foolish. I could make it an innocent cup of coffee. You're not going to use Stephen Cord to make me jealous. Oh, I didn't intend to. I thought you were above such human failings, such as jealousy. You know, it might not be a bad idea. If it doesn't work, I can have a lot of fun trying. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. Connie, open up the door. Connie, if you don't open up the door... I can't get the baby's belly. I don't owe you anything. Yes, you do. I just want to know the truth. The truth? You wouldn't know the truth if it hit you in the mouth. I never cared for that. Fast talking, slow working, no good. Bull! 